Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. there everybody this is Patricia Leonard and I am your host on Hello Self podcast I am so excited for you to hear from my guest who I just recently met about her coaching and her background and I'll give you a little overview but just remember what this show is about I am here with a mission to turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And remember, it's time to get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf. No more excuses. That's what we're here (laughs) for, to give you some ideas, tips, strategies, some things that have helped other people with their hello self moments, because that's what this is about, is Hello self moments are those times when all of a sudden an idea hits us or we read something in a book and we say, you know what, that's a great idea or I'm going to do that. So I'll be asking my guest, what was the hello self moment that Mm -hmm. caused her to transition in to coaching and some of the things that I'm going to tell you about? So, Laura, just a quick hello, and then I'm going to introduce you. There she is. Do you hey see there. Her? Hi. <laughs> yes, thank you for being here. So oh, I'll give you, yeah, I'll give you all a, an overview from her bio, and then I'm going to let her tell the real story. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just have a conversation. You know how this goes. Nothing planned. Here we go. Just out here doing something. One thing that I'd like to say, when I looked on Laura's website, and you'll see this when you go back and check out her website and all of the work she does, but she has this saying on there from Angela Davis. It says, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. That might be a great thing for you to put on your mirror in the bathroom so you remember that each morning. But mm-hmm. I, it, it reminded me because we all need reminders. That's why podcasts are so good. You can go on there and check them out and go back and listen to them again. By the way, I want to say one more thing. I just started, I have guest podcasts, but then I just started a podcast myself that is more motivational seminar. And we're specifically right now talking about mindset and the mask we wear that says, no, I'm okay. I don't need to do this, but check that out too. Okay, here we go. I'm going to introduce you to my guest today, Laura Wagen. Netscht. Now, that's a German name, and she and I just went through it, and I know I said it wrong, so I'll give her a chance when she introduces herself to say it right. But I love that I did get the Wagen right. <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah, so she'll tell you a little bit more about that. But anyway, she got into her business, and it is Mosaic business consulting. She got into that because she wanted to offer tips and ideas that would help you and others avoid pitfalls and build success along the way. She's an experienced author, business consultant, planner, strategist, and certified executive coach. She's got more than 30 years of experience And I'm not going to go into all of the industries, but she has, if you think she hasn't worked in your industry, you're wrong. She's been there. Fast (laughs) forward. No, I haven't. I have worked in everything. (laughs) Yes. And that's why we become coaches because we have been there, done that, and we can offer some ideas and help to other people. Uh, Laura specializes in working with women 
and minority owned businesses, especially those are who are in healthcare, uh, coaching, consulting, and the counseling industry. She believes that our diverse coaching practices provide a critical and beautiful contribution to the business community. Thus, Mosaic Business Consulting, which really is about all the pieces coming together. She says it's a collection of small pieces that when put together, create a beautiful picture. So that gives you something to think about when you're creating your business. Think about the pieces that you're putting in and mm -hmm. what you want to be part of. And I'm sure she'll say more about that. But it's a, I love the image because I think it is such a, an important aspect of helping you put a picture together of your own business. She's helped people acquire over a million dollars needed in funding their businesses and to start and expand their business. So she's got a lot of background. I'm going to let Laura give you some information about her side of the story and the journey that she's been on and some tips and strategies. And you know me, I'll cut in sometimes and ask a million questions. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, Laura, it's your turn. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me. It's really great to be here. And I'm so glad we had this opportunity to meet for, prior to this and yeah, and share our gifts and our talents yes. to others. It's it's such a wonderful opportunity. So I really do appreciate it. Yeah, well, I'm glad you could be here. We and and this is how it all happens. We came together because a mutual <laughs> business friend of ours suggested that we come together. So yeah. uh, so that's how it all happens. You just got to get out there and uh, meet others. And, and say yes. Yeah. Oh, that's and a good yes. one. Say <laughs> yes. Yes. You know. So, Laura, just tell us about your journey, the parts of it that you want, your business journey. What made you, what was the hello self moment that made you go into this kind of business and share anything you want to share about your journey that you think might help our listeners, which they're trying to learn how to let go of their mindsets and move toward can and get yeah. out of the cans yeah, yeah. so anything well, that you think yes it's a really great question and I could give you the longest story of That's how good. I got here but I'm gonna well I'm gonna shrink it to the very end on purpose for just okay. a moment and say in my nonprofit career at least in that segment I had gotten to the point where I was CEO and and had done the thing that you do at the top and then my husband got a his job took us back to New Jersey. And then I started working for other people under that role, recognizing their, their challenges as leaders and yes. then worked under another person yet again, when we moved back to North Carolina. And so I found that in my journey, I had pretty much worn out myself in reference to nonprofit. I felt like I was just burnt out. I had done 20 years of nonprofit work. I was done. And I think what was great was my boss at the time, she, she said, maybe it's not a right fit anymore. And she was right. Hard to hear. Very hard for me to hear at the time. Mm, that's great. And certainly gave me pause, made me angry, right? Because we fight back yes! first. And then, <laughs> and then it, there's that reaction, that gut reaction. But upon leaving that organization, which I ended up doing, which was a good decision, I started asking myself the tough question, which is what now? What's next, right? And when I was asking myself that question, I said, how can I combine the various skills that I have into a job that I can 
assist others because that's critical for me. That's a part of who I am in, intrinsically is to assist others. And that's a value that I hold dear in my heart is to ensure that I'm advancing other people, that I'm helping other people. And so in that respect, I said, okay, well, so I have all these, I have a myriad skill set. What do I do? Because I've taught at universities, I've worked in retail, I've worked in healthcare, I've, um, you know, I don't know, I've done all these different things. And and so I liked the research, I liked the teaching, I liked the the building of something and ensuring that people advance in some form or fashion, right? So how can I help people advance? And then I was caught, well, what population do I work with then? You know, and, and so I was really struck. And so then I finally decided, you know, this coaching thing seems really interesting. And I'm a former therapist. So I was thinking as a, as a mental health therapist, maybe I could um, combine that empathetic part of myself with all these other skills and do something on mm -hmm. behalf of others. So the first thing that came to mind, because it was so fresh in my mind, was what are the struggles that leaders in nonprofit organizations deal with and how can I help them? Mm -hmm. So my company name actually initially was Synergy of Hope. Ooh. It was not Mosaic Business Consultant. And so it was through various experiences with colleagues and clients, because I actually do listen, their feedback was telling me, no, Laura, you know, there's not like, how are you going to build your business? What do you mean by leadership? What are you going to do? And, and there was all this competition and, and it, it felt very, very false. It did not feel genuine and authentic. And I'm the type of person who says, basically, what you see is what you get. And I want to remain as authentic and genuine as possible, as real as possible, because mm -hmm. the yes. minute I try and hook this value, which isn't mine to this purpose, you know, you have like, you know, cross purposes, you have a, a misalignment and I want to stay aligned at all times. And so for me, it was about figuring out, oh, that's probably not the right space then. And then listening to my colleagues say, well, you know, I really want to know how do I build my marketing? I really want to know how can I get a loan? I really want to know how can I organize my business so that I'm more effective? I yes. want to know how can I, how can I figure out the financial piece? Yes. And a lot of this, I kind of knew from running other business stuff and being a consultant long time ago for doctors, et cetera. So I felt like, oh, okay, maybe I can do this consulting piece as well as the coaching piece. Mm -hmm. So I got my certification in the executive coaching, right? But then I thought, maybe I can do this consulting piece too, which is more teaching and more inf information giving rather than just listening, questioning, and checking to see how I can be of assistance to build. Now I can also offer information, right? The consulting piece. And so I, I see coaching and consulting as two different avenues. That's interesting mm -hmm. because I've been asked that before and I never thought of them as two different things. Oh, they really are. So for me, coaching is truly about asking the right questions to ensure that you're headed down the right path with the client and going in their direction and making sure you're aligned with what they want. And also at the same time, asking the next question that gets them to move forward. So it's always about forward momentum and coaching. In and there mind. are a lot of crossovers, right? Because what yeah. you're doing is, yeah, as you're starting to ask, because I've had this same thing is if you don't get them start, yeah, in the right direction, but coaching, I, I see what you're talking about because they have to make a commitment at some point with yes okay got well, it and some people truly don't know right and right. so they'll say well i don't know should i be an llc should i be a sole provider yes. i don't know but let's explain what those are then you tell me what feels better for you 
Let's explain the differences. I think that is an excellent way to describe them as separate things because I've had a million people ask me that kind of question. Yeah. Yeah. I always treat like therapy is I'll go into the past and I will deal with your past and I will unveil patterns that seem to be impacting your present. Then I deal with moving that person forward from that point. But in coaching, coaching is taking you from the present and moving you forward. It doesn't mean you never speak to the past, but it means that we don't delve into the past. Mm. We, We touch on it and then we bring you from this place you are now and bring you forward via questions, via self reflection, you know, and, and discernment for themselves. And then at the same time, perhaps reflecting to them what they can't see in themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what coaching does. And then consulting is me providing direction or information to assist you, to encourage you to go a particular direction based on information you've shared with me Mm -hmm. and based on my expertise, my knowledge. And so those are the three distinctions I make. I think that. that's helpful to our audience because a lot of people ask that kind of question yeah. because our language sometimes does not give us the definition. I think language is confusing because everybody has a different uh, description about what different things mean. So, yeah, I, yeah so that's very... It's just one person, somebody else. I mean, this is what you say. Somebody else may describe it another way. But I think what I really like about this, it gives people a way that it might be listening today, a way to define what they do. Yeah. Yeah. To a client or to a customer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. And, Very and good. so, for example, I have most of my clients are a mixture I would say I do a mixture of both coaching and consulting, which is mm-hmm. why I really do include both of same them thing here mm-hmm. in my description. Right. And, but at the same time, I find that sometimes I lean far more to the coaching aspect because they are still exploring while other times they're ready to move in a particular direction. They just don't know where or how, and I have to give them the tools and, and the kit to do that. You know, Laura, I think it's very interesting. I, for a number of years, I was a contract consultant for an organization. And I think it's interesting because you're right. Sometimes they're ready. And so so they sent me to this organization and they said, we've got a diversity problem there. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to. So I went there. And taught, it was a small company of scientists and they were cancer research. And oh, so I went there and talked to this small organization. It was a small organization and the parent company was in California. So I went there and I built a, I started talking about diversity and it was scientists from all over the world, all different uh, ethnicities. And so I started, we started talking about this and they said, what are you here for? And I said, this was what I was contracted to do is that there's a diversity problem. And they said, we don't have a diversity problem. We have a breakdown Mm -hmm. with our corporate office. Right. Communication, which is a whole different animal. That is the issue. That was the issue. And I think it's interesting because I'm a very different consultant. And this organization let me do whatever I wanted to do. So what we did is we went ahead and worked on what we were working on. And I'm one that puts in a lot of art because I like the art. But anyway, what we did is we put a show together, not a PowerPoint, not right, a bunch of right. words. Yeah. <laughs> we put a point a, a show together and we, we used the, the scientists as the actors and actresses. And four vice presidents from this organization came to um, the small company to see what we were up to, because it seemed like the people were doing great. And Mm -hmm. so the only reason I'm saying this is 
to our audience, to your point about coaching and consulting, there are multiple ways of doing that and describing it, just like you've been saying. So anyway, we we put on our show and I said to the visitors, I said, this is not a PowerPoint. That's what you're used to, right? Yeah. Vice President of Human Resources, Vice President of Operations, Vice President of Marketing. So you get the point. Yeah. And so anyway, this is what happened. They listened and they watched and the, mm. the employees did the show. And oh, we, nice. de- we designed it ourselves. And but they had it was not a PowerPoint. It was them speaking here and here I am this. But anyway, I thought it was very interesting. The vice presidents, men and women mixture had tears in their eyes and guess what they did yeah 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 guess what they did they brought some of these people out to california to work with the employees out there i i'm telling you to your point we can define consulting and coaching in multiple ways and right oh yeah i love that because I love it that you're not just saying you're either this or you're this. Right. You're, you're no, not. no, you, yeah, you no. And, and I, I think that none of us, even as coaches, um, really stays pure all no, the time that's... because we do have our own reflection. We do have our own bias. We have our own perspectives, our own experiences that yes. lend guidance and and appreciation and value for the other person and so how do we express those fact those features or those talents that we have in a way that works for and on behalf of the client that we're working with right oh my that is so true i love that's why i like having guests because your story your own story personal story is so valuable to those listening. It doesn't mean it's their story. No, but... no, no. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it certainly wasn't a linear path. Let's say that. No, that's what I, mean, I, I love. started out in music. I started out in music. You're kidding. No, I went to a private conservatory initially and then in college and then left that, got into tennis because it makes complete sense. Yes. And then injured myself and then got into my the first couple of years of psychology and then I took eight years off from school and worked in healthcare and then I went back to school and finished my undergrad in psych finished my master's in social work and while working in healthcare you know and then started seeing clients in reference to therapy and providing therapy and eventually got into nonprofit and did all of that. And then went back for the PhD. I did not get the PhD. I did all but dissertation defense, which means yeah. that I passed part one and I passed the comp exams and all that, but I did not finalize the, the dissertation. So much you know, to my chagrin. Oh my gosh. I am so excited for our audience to hear this because You see, some of you started, I remember I had a client recently that she start. her parents wanted her to get in accounting. So she became CPA and she said, Patricia, I hate it. And she did, but she did that. And so many people sometimes think because that's what I am. You said something a while ago that is so critical. Your authenticity. Find your mm. own authenticity, regardless of what the world says. Yes. I like that. And you kept discovering other aspects of yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I still do. In fact, what yes. I found, yes. just to give you a sense, like this journey has not been linear at all. As you know, synergy yes. of hope, now mosaic, right? And then more importantly, it's been a self-exploration time as well. Like, where are my strengths? Where do I begin and end so that I know what clientele I can really be effective with? And so I've really niched down to say, okay, I work extremely well with women. Why? I love women. 
I think women are amazing. I think women are successful. They're, they're so talented at what they do. And we all need a leg up. We all need a boost. And so my thought is, let's try and put those little pieces together that are missing. So you have that puzzle piece so that you have that beautiful mosaic that yes. is your business, that is you, part of you, right? And so how do I do that? And to me, it's like working with women and people of color, part of the, the ambition behind that or the passion and the motivation, let's say, was I went into a bank um, a couple of years after I'd started my business looking for a loan and had been introduced to the bank manager but through a friend of ours. And my husband and I went to the bank together in the first 30 minutes, he talked to my husband. I was ignored the entire 30 minutes of that discussion, even though my husband would say, well, that's really something Laura can handle. Well, that's something Laura might discuss. Well, Laura takes care of that. You know, It took repeated emphasis for this guy to figure out, oh, I'm talking to the wrong dude. I'm supposed to be talking to her. And then, it, you know, the insult was so profound for me. And then on top of that, I had the same treatment when buying a new car. It was not for my husband. It was for me. And it was like, hello, do I not exist? It was so bizarre. But to get it in such close proximity, it was like within a few months of each other. And so I was thinking to myself, this is just wrong. There is something wrong with our culture when... I'm discounted because I'm female, even though I'm the one doing the work and I'm the one in charge of the company. So what's up? And it was, it was so profound. I started asking, are other women going through the same experience? I did a ton of research at that point. And I started to realize that the pattern of talking about women making earning 81 cents to the dollar, well, that's only for white women, by the way. People, women of color who are black or Latino make way less than that. They're making 60 cents on the dollar or 50 cents on the dollar, right? So we need to be cognizant and support other women big time, because if we elevate them, we elevate ourselves. Yes. And that's the part we miss out on, just as we miss out on, in my perspective, this idea of competition within entrepreneurs, you know, and businesses like we need to out-compete our competitors. I totally disagree. I would love to do something, for example, collaboratively with oh, you yes. because you're so creative. You're fabulous. And I think women need to be supporting and lifting one another and sharing that and saying, okay, look at how fantastic she is at X, Y, and Z. You need to go there. I am so quick to refer people to other people where their skill set outdoes mine. It outshines yes. mine. Let's say they do organizational management. Let's say they do change management. Let's say they do organizational development. You know, those are areas where, sure, let's let's pass the baton because that's not my focus. My focus is on small businesses in the service arena to see how I can build them. And, and that's and very it. important, isn't it? Yeah. To know what your market is. Know yes. what your market is ahead of time because it just helps you settle, uh, get everything that's going to support that market, and people know where you work. Then, exactly. Yes. And if you get known for X, people refer to you really yes. quickly. If yes. you aren't known for X, they don't know. Yes. And I literally, I found this out again. One of my experiences where a colleague of mine, who is a friend of mine, chose a different person to collaborate with in reference to a big potential uh, position with leadership assistance. Yes. I'm a certified executive leader. <laughs> that was my initial business because she didn't understand my messaging. So she didn't know that's what I did. And so she chose somebody else because they were known for X. Yes. Yes. And so I I learned very quickly, what was that all about? How come I got dissed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think our society is changing at all about well, women and minorities? 
It, that's a tough question because I think our political environment right now supersedes so many of the smaller discussions that really need to be larger. And what we don't realize, so just as an example, yes, women who earn less on a dollar therefore earn a little less income per year. Because of that, they may have the same bills that another person who's in their position who's a male earns, right? And so, but now their income to debt ratio is higher because their debt is higher compared to their income. Mm-hmm. And because of that, their their FICO score, their credit scores are going to be lower. And so because of that, they can't get as much money. And because of that, they also pay more interest on the little amounts they get. Mm-hmm. So it's like we get triple whammied from earning less initially, earning less because we have a lower in credit score and earning less because we're paying back more because our interest rates are higher. So right. this is not okay. If we want to advance women really effectively, we need to do something politically and policy-wise that changes the dynamics so women have a, a more even playing field in reference to small business and in reference to, you know, building women's businesses. And I can't, I just, I, and I, you know, in that I got a, a million dollars for different companies I'd worked for on behalf of to help them write their business plan, get their loans within a year. That was within one year. And so to me, it feels like men still got more money than women. And it irritated the crap out of me and still does. Yeah. What do you think, what can women do? Women, (laughs) because I believe we get in our own way sometimes. Oh, totally agree with that. So one of the things I encourage women to do, it is not easy to write a business plan. And yet, if you can answer every question in your business plan, you know your business way better than they're ever going to expect at a bank or at a lending institution, even a nonprofit lending institution. And the reason I bring this up is repeatedly, the lending institutions would try and throw curveballs, if you will, to these women who would apply for loans, et cetera. And they had the spreadsheets because I'd worked with them on them. They had the numbers. They had everything. Like this section leads to this section, which leads to this section. I, I explain everything in my business planning process, right? And so I go through all this and I say, basically, this is your argument of why your business will be successful why you and how you're going to make it happen you know and th- it it lays it out for the next 3 years so you can't argue with it it's perfect and over and over i've heard from banks they pass it around in the banks because it's such a thorough business plan mm-hmm. and it's like this is what a business plan should look like you know i, I think it's one way yeah And I think it's interesting because I remember in corporate America, I had a leader. He's now a consultant in New York. And he said to me, "Okay, I was in this meeting with a group of vice presidents and we were talking about process improvement in the organization, making the processes more effective, cost effective and efficient. And I came up with some ideas and it was mostly men because I worked in a manufacturing organization that was automotive. I haven't worked in manufacturing. See? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Or we'd be great together then. Exactly. exactly. Anyway, I was, (laughs) I came up with this idea. I said, I think that this could be a possibility for us to But anyway, I went into and explaining it after Mm. we got out of there with and and they didn't listen. The vice presidents were all men and they didn't listen. And after we got out of there, Witt said, come into my office. He said, you are brilliant. But he said, the problem is. You talk too much, you try to explain it, he said, CEOs and vice presidents want you to point out three key things. Yeah, and that's it. Is it? 
this is it and this is it. Even if you go in with a problem, come in with three points. And I tell you, I even in my consulting, I mean, I am blatantly honest. I told a woman one time, the problem is not you, your husband, it's you. She didn't like to hear that. And I see that you got something one time you didn't like to hear either. But yeah. But Wit was the best. He he was the best. That was the best lesson I learned because I think we do talk too much sometimes, and we just need put it out here, put it out here, and then we give them a chance to be in charge by asking questions about that. Well, Patricia, what do you think? You said this. What do you think about that specific point? And then they can follow because we're all over the place and we can multitask better than a lot of time. I'm not saying all men because I love men. I love working with men. But <laughs> but it was the biggest lesson and it has really helped me in my business is to mm. get clear. And I don't know if that fits in coaching, consulting. Oh, most assuredly. If you've got because... a business startup, I did a business, one page business plan that I share with people, one page. And they have to get their thoughts together on this one page. Here's my market. Here's my, that. here's my product. Here's what. And as, well, can, can I just offer, I, I don't yeah. mean to interrupt, but one of the things I've found in working with people, and I do way more than just a business plan, just to let you know, but yeah, no, um, no, no, I know. I, one of the things that I, I really have enjoyed is through the process of somebody working on their business plan, they get clearer yes. on their target market. So when even like, if it's a one pager, Yes. In my my experience, they don't spend enough time thinking about it. But when I pose other questions like, well, what about your competition? And what about, you know, other factors that might influence yes. who you can see? It then becomes crystal clear. Oh, but I didn't really mean that. I meant yes. this. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, so the now one really page good. plan is only a start. And then. Yeah. You, yeah, I agree. Oh my God, we yeah. would be great together. <laughs> yes, yeah, I do. I do. I think it's so much fun to watch. And and when you watch the the light bulb go off, yeah, you know this moment. It's just so fascinating because some of the time you don't even realize what you've said. In fact, I did two interviews yesterday from my radio show, and that each of the guests had said quoted me back something I had said, and I was like, oh God. <laughs> Don't I do did? That. And I was like, oh, I said, that? yeah. And, and both were, one was very flattering and one was sort of flattering. <laughs> and it was like, but it really caught me off guard because I was nervous. Suddenly, what did I say? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> like, those don't are repeat hello, me back to me. <laughs> yeah, those are hello self moments. Oh, what did I <laughs> Exactly. Oh my God. I um, love this yeah. conversation because yeah. we're we're our own experiences out here. Tell them, tell the audience a little bit more about your radio show and what your your purpose is on. Yeah, yeah. So the Mosaic Life with Laura W is my second radio show, and the first one was about supporting women, and then this one is about supporting small business, basically, and entrepreneurs, yes. and basically saying our businesses are a bunch of pieces and that when they're put together, they make a really beautiful whole and a beautiful picture. And what we find in speaking to different entrepreneurs, there are different parts of a business that each person struggles with. I stink at doing marketing. Me too. <laughs> don't like doing it, resistant to it, don't know why, but at the same time, fortunate enough that I don't have to do a ton, but at the same time, not doing enough by any stretch. Right. right. Yeah. So to me, getting other people who are willing to do that on my behalf is where I need to go. Right. That's where you delegate. Cause it's like, if you're not going to do it, somebody's got to do it. Right. Fabulous well, point. Yeah. And so that's where one of the things that I talk about is, you know, what, anyway, it's looking at all the different industries and all the different parts of a business 
and then giving people tips and tools and tricks and little ways to improve their own business or look at their business differently yes. so that they can be stronger. And in that, what I've found is that sometimes the journey that they talk about becoming an entrepreneur is that catalyst that a lot of people need, you know? And so for me, I, I enjoy it because I always start out with what got you started in yes. entrepreneurship or what made you choose to decide to own your own business. For example, you know, there's a physician, so she's a family practice physician. So she's an MD and she didn't like the idea of corporate medicine. She wanted more of a holistic approach where she can spend more time one-on-one -on -one with her patients. Yes. How can she do that? So she opens her own practice. That's what prompted her, right? Yes. And so we have different motivations for what we're doing. So how do we make that happen, right? And, and we um, see that when we start to put a business plan together, maybe, or, or yeah. Or even before that, so I think some people feel like, so before I started my business, I said, I didn't know whether going into business for myself was the right choice. I'd never done it. No one in my family had ever done it. So what did that mean? It was very different. And it's been very different. The whole journey has been a learning experience on so many levels. And I think the other thing that I always find is that entrepreneurs in particular, we get a deluge of information thrown at us constantly. Oh, you got to use this marketing technique. Oh, you got to yes. use this approach and you got to do that. And don't forget to do that thing. And oh, by the way, do you have that done? And you're just feeling constant pressure to do something oh, other so than what you're doing. So and so when, when I talk to people about the business plan, I say, okay, so here's the reality. We can't be everything to everyone, but more importantly, we can't do all things at once. So what we need to decide is what we can accomplish in year one. And let's make those goals really substantial, Yes. but let's break them down. So how many posts per month can you make on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, or, yes. or whatever, right? So how many can you do? And let's just start with that. And that will be month one. Then we'll go to month two. And we'll look at how many posts do you think you could do once you got more used to it? And how many posts could you do month three? And then by the end, how many people are you going to reach? And then how many people are you going to start engaging in that content? And how are you going to engage people in that content? Yes. So just really breaking it down into its really small parts so that they start with, I give them usually when I'm working with them independently, a social media calendar. And so they can literally map out month to month. There's a yes. tab at the bottom of each, you know, of the spreadsheet and they can do month to month of what they're going to post ahead of time. Absolutely. And I think that is what happens to a lot of startup businesses or a person that wants to write a book or whatever. Yes. I, I think it's getting some clarity about that and breaking it up into small pieces because otherwise we're spinning and, oh my gosh, I got to do this. And, oh my gosh, I got to do that. And, and yeah. to break it's it. It's overwhelming, right? Yes. You, you, you know, it's like, oh, and then you feel even more less than. Yes. Right. And so I always have this one seminar in my series of the business boost boot camp or. Oh, I want to hear more about that, too. Well, it's a fun thing. It's it's 14 weeks, but it's a fun thing. And it, it basically carries people through a business plan and goes through this thing. But one of the big things I talk about is imposter syndrome, because we're always feeling like I could have done that better mm -hmm. uh, if they if I don't do it perfectly, they're going to find me out. If mm -hmm. I don't have all the information, they're going to find me out. If I am not 100% knowing of everything, which is a very, very serious issue for women, not so much men. Yes. Like women don't apply for jobs until they, they have 100% of the skill yes. set. Yes. Men apply for the jobs. If they have 60 to 80%, we're good. Yes. I'll apply. Uh, you're and, absolutely right about yes. that. We, I think we tend to, I don't know if that's our society or what, but I oh, think we tend partially. to, yeah, to try to cover up those masks of how we feel. And yet it limits 
our capability, our success, exactly. our opportunities. Yeah, very important. So yeah. so you have a boot camp that we'll put that out on the website too, huh? Of how they can, can they sign up for that? Yeah, in fact, I know this may air after it, but it's starting on February 13th. The new cohort is starting on February 13th. And as a gift to International Coaching Federation, and to, so ICF Charlotte and Western Carolina's coaches. Yes. And, you know, I throw in people who are from other cohorts of ICF. Yes. If they are a member, then I offer the first six sessions for free. Oh, wow. And there's a link you can go to at the ICF Charlotte page to register. And what is that link? Is it, do you know the link? No, that's okay. We I'll, can, I'll look it up. But yeah, yeah, and we can put it out there when we yeah. post this podcast if people are interested. Yeah. But I think that, yeah, that's really important too. Well, and then there's, uh, yeah, so uh, go ahead. No, go on. Well, and so the, the, the boot camp kind of goes through a variety of items. It, it looks at, you know, the business planning. It looks at how do you price your item? Because we often don't yes. charge enough. Yeah, it looks at how, you know, the imposter syndrome, which often plays a role in how how much we price something. But then it also yeah. looks at the financial piece, because I've got to walk people through that. It walks people through marketing and the in, there's like a marketing segment that's sort of your basic marketing. And then I have an, a more advanced marketing part portion of how to incorporate more AI if you want yeah in the second half of the series. And wow. so it's a 14 week series and it has um, access to a, fr- a private Facebook page. It has, if you sign up for the actual series, so the, the first six weeks are a little different, you know, than the last eight weeks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so everyone has access to the private Facebook page and can put information and questions there, which I can answer or your cohort can answer, which I love. Yes. And then there's also the ability to, we're going to have in between sessions, which are Q&A, so they can ask anything of me about their particular business. Because every person's business, and I have to say, I've helped hundreds of businesses, and I'm not kidding at this point, hundreds of businesses, not any two are alike, not any two. They're well, all unique. When you've got individuals, you're we're we're just not a one person kind of world out there. It's so. not even that. I've had companies that I've worked with, and there's no two alike. I've no. worked with different healthcare companies, no two alike. It's so I, fascinating. I, I know, um, and that's what makes the work great is yeah. that it is there is something happening that's unique and challenges us as individual coaches yeah. or consultants, Laura. Well, first to my audience, Laura has given you so many ideas that you can start here and end up here. Just follow your heart on what you want to do. Yeah, You may get a no every now and then, but that doesn't stop you. Sometimes it's even a wake up call or another hello self moment to say, you know what? Maybe this is not for me. All the truth is. Patricia, I have to interrupt because one of the lines I always say is you started with no, you started without asking, didn't do anything other than elevate you. Yes. You started with no. So get out of no. Yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. And, you know, uh, I think sometimes we don't know if we should go to certain events. Go if it's something you're interested in, you may meet somebody. So she Mm -hmm. says, Laura says, say, yes, I'll be there and just go. And if if you're thinking about a workshop, if it stays on your mind, go take it because it's probably something. If you've got an idea, go talk to somebody that's doing that or whatever. I think follow through. Laura has said there's no limit to what you can do. Do this, do that. And who cares if they say this woman is crazy? She's been all over. <laughs> but because the more experience you have, the better opportunity you can to serve your client. And so I think don't think anything about just challenging yourself all the time to go out there. 
but I just want to wrap this up and I it's been so exciting create your own mosaic in your yes. business and see what you get see what the pieces are that come out for you and then I think you'll see that everything that Laura has been telling you about so Laura thank you so much oh, and if you want to check out her new workshop that she's doing we'll have this all on when we post the um, podcast we'll have all that information out there so thank you so much laura oh my god i could spend all day and we're running out of time and well thank and I, you yeah and I, I just think i may take your workshop too <laughs> no you don't need it though that's not that's not I that's don't silliness know, you, know, you could teach it Sometimes I think I'm a little crazy in uh, the things that I do. But you know what? We're always going to look at ourselves like that, that we're different. Be uniquely you. So exactly. in wrapping this all up, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Thank you, audience, for being here. I'm hoping that you got something out of this that encourages you, inspires you, and motivates you to get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf. Again, I'm Patricia Leonard with Hello Self Podcast. And remember what I always say at the end, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.